Okay. Get off me now, I'm not going anywhere, am I? She's all yours. Have you missed me? Leona Mackenzie. Hello, always a pleasure. How are you doing? Top of the world, me. And what we in for today? I'm booked in for bed and breakfast, are I? Very funny. I'll just ask the officer if you don't mind. Brief circumstances, please. I attended at the Hammer and Pincers pub at ten past eleven. Leona was in the tap room <coughs> selling frozen meat to other customers. We tried to apprehend her. She was verbally abusive to myself and the other officer. <laughs> yeah, because you tried to have me up against the fucking wall. She attempted to abscond from the scene initially, but then she calmed down. She's been arrested on suspicion of handling <coughs> stolen goods. Let me know if you want a joint of pork for your Sunday dinner. Take it we've done a search already. Yep, no weapons on a person. The meat's already in the property store. <coughs> right, thank you. All right, Leona, can you take your coat off and any jewellery, please? I'm going to check these bits in. Right, when did we last see you, Leona? Last year. Must have been behaving yourself the past few months. You know me, I'm a good girl, really. Okay, you know the drill. Can I have your full name, please? You've just said it. For the record? Leona Louise Mackenzie. And your date of birth? 6th of the 9th, 91. And how old does that make you now, Leona? Can you not do maths? Do you class yourself as white and British? No, I'm a fucking Muslim. Just answer the questions, Leona. I am answering them. And where are you living at the moment? Have we got an address? No. Okay, no fixed abode. Would you like anybody to be informed of your arrest? No. Nope. All right, do you want to stand on that spot for my colleague? Over here, please. All right. Calm yourself down. I'll calm you down in a minute. I'm just trying to do my job. Do you want to stand there? <sighs> stand still. I am standing still. <sighs> right, arm up. Move your legs. Right, OK, so what have we got here? We've got a handbag, a purse containing £2.11 in coins, a debit card, a photograph... Look after that, that photo. Will do. And what else? Lipsticks, a mascara, a mobile phone... Right, have you taken any drugs or alcohol in the last 24 hours, Leona? Yep. Do you want to enlighten us as to what? Not really. Have you got any drugs on you now? I wish. Are you on any medication at the moment? Yeah, loads. What? Methadone, diazepam, progabalin. OK, and are you going to need any of them in the next 24 hours? Yeah, I am. Right, OK, I'll speak to the duty doctor and see what we can do. I'm going to need my meth, like, now if I'm going to be stuck here all night. OK, we'll get you sorted as soon as we can. But can I at least have a fag while you're at it? Nope. How long am I going to be in for? Until you've been interviewed and a decision's been made on your charge. And how long's that going to be? You know the score, Leona, it takes as long as it takes. We don't keep you here any longer than we have to. <sighs> Is someone going to let me have a fag before I go in or what? <coughs> Afraid not. I don't think a cigarette's going to help that cough. <coughs> Get me some cough medicine then. No, can do. Well, I'm not going to buzz my tits off on some fucking cough medicine, am I? Do we need to do a strip search, Sarge? I charge extra for that. No, I think we're all right. Take her to her cell. Oi, when am I going to get something to eat? In a bit. When's in a bit? When we say. I'm going to get pissed off in a minute. Leona, the longer you play silly buggers, the longer everything takes. I thought you'd know that by now. You cocky you and I don't like you. Yeah, well, like it all lump it, Leona, cos I'm the one looking after you tonight. I want a fag! Hello? Can anyone hear me? I need a smoke! It's fucking freezing here! Oi, hello? If you're not going to get my meds, can I at least have a fag? Here we go I'm again. It's all right. Lot. I'll go. Cheers, mate. You all right, Leona? I want a smoke. You know that's not possible. Fuck's sake. Do you want a cup of tea? A cup of fucking tea? I can't sort your meds any quicker. It's all in hand, but I can get you a hot drink. <sighs> yeah, go on then. Milk? Yeah, and two sugars. And a blanket. It's fucking freezing in here. Cup of tea and blanket. Anything else? Yeah. Can I have a tampon, please? No problem. I've been doing this job for eight years now, if my memory serves me right. Before that, I was a prison officer. That was a blast, that was. I loved it, actually, but I've been doing it for a long time and I reckoned it was time for a change, you know? 
It can actually be a lot more volatile here. Situations you find yourself in every day. You never know what to expect. Every shift's different. I've never thought of myself as an adrenaline junkie, but I suppose I must be. And it does get stressful, no doubt about it. Us detention officers put our lives at risk on a daily basis. People kicking off, getting violent. It's all par for the course, so it's important we work together as a team. We've always got each other's back. When someone's lost it, then we might have to restrain them. Few of us like. Never something I enjoy, and I'd rather avoid it at all costs, but it's just part and parcel of the job, sadly. The other thing that's difficult is strip searches. Never gets easier. I always try to be as respectful as possible and follow the rules. The strict guidelines, you say. But I have to admit, there's been times when I've seen people do it in a way that I'm not completely comfortable with. But it's not worth me saying out. We've all got different ways and it's easier if I just keep me head down and do things as I think right and proper. I've seen too much over the years to think it's all black and white, you know. Drugs and booze do terrible things to people. So I try as best I can not to judge. You never know why they've ended up in this place. And the thing is, especially for people who it's new to, it's a truly shocking experience. Being arrested and finding themselves in custody. All that stuff you normally take for granted is gone. Check your shoes off. Get your wedding ring off. I've seen people really freak out over stuff like that. It's a shame, really, because a lot of the people who come in here have got mental health problems. They're not getting the help they need in the community, and so they end up in here. They can wait for hours for a bed to come up in the local psychiatric ward, and that's if they're lucky. They shouldn't be here, really. Some of the other lads think I'm a soft touch, but I reckon that if you treat people OK, then they tend to respond better. Not always, of course, but on average. A reassuring word goes a long way in my book. I mean, there's limits to what you can do, but the fact is they're innocent until proven guilty and they deserve the same dignity and respect as everyone else. It's not that big a deal to make someone a cup of tea and ask them how they take it, is it? I always think about how I would feel if the person in custody was a relative or friend. How would I want them to be treated? OK, who have we got here then? This is Jamal. What are the circumstances of his arrest? He was arrested at 3pm this afternoon for assault involving another male, his landlord. He then became aggressive towards us and resisted arrest, apparently some kind of dispute about rent arrears. The other male's now in hospital with a suspected broken nose and wants to press charges. OK, thanks. No worries, Sarge. Right, Jamal, I'm going to ask you a few questions now. Some might seem a bit strange, but we have to ask these to everyone. What's your full name, please? Name? Name, please. Do you speak English? Is English your first language? Do you need a translator? Do you speak English? All right, Jackie, that's enough. Yes, I do. Yes, I do fucking speak English. Whoa. You fucking Whoa. bitch. Whoa. 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 Shut Whoa. up. Whoa. Whoa. Sorry, have I sworn at you? Have I sworn at you? Have I? No. No, so I'd appreciate if you didn't swear at me and my colleagues. We're just doing our jobs. As I said, I've got some questions I need you to answer. And the sooner you cooperate, the easier it'll be for everyone. Has my landlord been arrested? Has he? I don't know anything about your landlord. Our job is just to book you in and look after you while someone else looked into what happened. I know this isn't nice, but we just need you to tell us a bit more about yourself and when you're seen by the investigating officers later, you can put your side across, all right? All right. Right. Jamal, is it? What's your full name, please? Jamal Kubedi. Could you spell your surname, please, Mr Jubedi? It's Kubedi. K-U-B-E-D-I. I want to know how long I'm going to be here. Do you understand why you've been arrested? No. It wasn't my fault. He's the one you should be arresting, not me. Listen, I don't care whose fault it was. That's not my job. My colleagues will get to the bottom of all that when they interview you. Did you hear what the arresting officer just said? Do you understand the allegation made? Whether or not you agree with it, it doesn't matter. Do you understand it? Yes. Right. Date of birth? 15th July, 1998. Address? 24 Woodhouse Road, Sheffield. 
Are you a British citizen? What the fuck? What, what? Uh, do I need to tell you again? I won't tolerate foul language. <laughs> what the hell has that got to do with anything? Just answer the question. You're a British citizen. You know, have you got a British passport? You're legally entitled to be here. Do you ask everyone that? It's just something we have to check for the records. Yes, I'm a British citizen. Right, thank you. Were you born in this country? Are you fucking kidding now me? Calm yourself down. It's just standard procedure to ask these questions. So it's not because I'm black? Come off of it. I was born in Kenya. Okay. How long will I be here? I don't know right now. It depends on when you're interviewed and how quickly I can get through these questions. I can only for 24 hours. Sometimes a bit longer than that, but it's usually quicker. I'll get to that bit. Thank you, Andy. Sorry, Sarge. Have you got any sharp objects on you? <laughs> no shanks? What the...? You know, blades, needles, chains, anything in your pockets that could cause harm to me and my colleagues. No. Right. You just have to answer the question, that's it. Any drugs? drugs. Tissue your teeth at me. Is there an echo in here? Drugs, you know, ganja, skunk, cocaine, spice, heroin, anything you shouldn't have on you. No. Why asking me these questions? They searched me already when they arrested me. Right, OK, fine. Could you empty your pockets into this tray, please? Everything will be kept in a secure locker and returned to you when you're released. Remove your hat, shoes and jacket. <sighs> then, I'm going to pass this wand over you just to make sure you haven't got anything dangerous and also give you a quick pat down. If you could stand still, please. That's it, thank you. OK, I need you to remove that necklace medallion thing too, Jamal. No, no, I'm not doing that. I'm doing everything else you ask, but I am not taking this off. It, it's, it's from my mum. Look, if you don't take it off, we'll have to remove it by force and it'll probably get broken. I'll get it. No! Get off me. Jamal, it's going to be put in a sealed bag and kept safe and you will get it back, OK? OK. OK. Right, is this your first time in custody? Yes. Do you have any health conditions we need to know about? No. Any medications you may need in the next 24 hours? No. Any physical injuries we need to be aware of? No. Have you used drugs, alcohol or solvents in the last 24 hours? No. Allergies? No. Would you like us to inform anyone about your arrest? No. Would you like us to provide you with a solicitor? You can get assigned a free and independent duty solicitor to assist you. No. Well, if you change your mind, just let us know and we can arrange that. And finally, would you like to see a copy of the PACE Codes of Practice? No. Right, now you'll be escorted to a cell for now. When do I get to go home? And just get into that bit. Hopefully, within 24 hours, you'll know what's going to happen next. But it could be less than that. We'll deal with your case as soon as we can. But we have lots of other people to process, too. This way. All right. I can go myself. Don't grab me. All right, you need to calm down, mate, and do as you're told. Come on, Sam. This way. Shut up! Will you shut up? People are trying to sleep in here. Fucking shut up! No one wants to listen to you. Shut up! Fucking hell. Will you shut up? I'm trying to sleep! <sighs> Coming here for a good sleep, it fucks me off when other people are shouting all night. I've not took out since yesterday and I'm fucking jangling my tits off and then you've got some nut job next door keeping you awake. I hate being awake at night. Because everything just fucking wrecks your head. Like you can get away from it in the day because you're busy, you're out doing stuff. Yeah, robbing or whatever, begging, selling whatever it is you're selling to get some cash to go out and score and then you're all right. But when I've not had out, I think about my kids. Like, Courtney will be six now. And I haven't seen her for a long time, but I can see her face, do you know what I mean? It's printed on my brain, like... I mean, I had her with me till she were one. I were a good mum. I were getting up at night, feeding her, bathing her, doing everything I was supposed to for a bit. I just couldn't quite keep it together. Because I was still with her dad then, and when I'm with him, there's just no way I can keep off at gear because he's worse than me. So I left her a few times to go out and score or go out and get money, whatever. I'd put her in a cot. Like, I'd make sure she was safe. I didn't want her to get hurt. And then they took my little list off me as soon as she was born. So when I see her face, that's what I see. Like, I look down and she's there. 
in my arms and I can feel her. I can actually feel her next to me sometimes. And you know when you've had your kids took off your hair, there's nothing left then. You've got absolutely nothing left to be better for. Because I don't deserve them. They don't deserve me. Do they look at me? I'm a fucking mess. They're much better off without me. I know that. I hope they're somewhere nice and really loved and looked after. Got their own nice bedrooms all paired up for them with loads of toys. And I hope they do good at school and get proper jobs and have nice lives and don't end up on the street doing shit like me. I hope they never end up with my life in and out of places like this. Locked in a freezing cold fucking room with no windows and people shouting and screaming all night and a blanket that does fuck all to keep you warm a mattress with other people's blood on it and you've got no to take your mind off stuff you don't even know what time it is how long you've got left to wait and if you do need anything you have to keep asking and asking for it like you're a fucking dog because that's how they see you most of them like you're the lowest of the low lost cause just another fucking smackhead looking down the noses at you like you shit on the shoe and it pisses me off when they're like that some of them are all right, you have a laugh and a joke with them, you can take piss out of them and they take piss out of you, I don't mind me, I've got a sense of humour, it's a lot better when they're nice to you. It's like that with punters and all, getting in people's cars, going back to people's flats, none of it's nice, yeah, none of it's fucking where you want to be or what you want to be doing, but it's better when they're kind to you, when they talk to you and they touch you like you're an actual person, like you're not just a fucking body. You've got a brain and you've got feelings. Because I have. Okay, we'll start with your photographs. So if you can give me your blanket, please. God, it's freezing in here. I'll give it your back as soon as we're done. Okay. Face me, please. Great. And turn to your left. And to your right. There we go. Now, I've got to take a mouth swap, Leona. Um, you can do it yourself if you want. If I hand this to you, can you do that? Yeah. That's it. Okay, just hand it back to me. Don't touch it. Great, hold on. Thank you. Right, I need to take a swab. What? I said I need to take a swab. I heard you. Well, then stop making a fuss. Open your mouth, please. And then I'm going to use this to take a sample from your cheek. <laughs> That's not happening. Well, I'm afraid you don't get a choice in the matter, Jamal. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Well, I have to. The easy way is that you open your mouth and I take a quick swab. It only takes a few seconds and it won't hurt. Or we have to do it the hard way and I'll have to cuff you. Okay? Get off me! <laughs> Can I get some assistance in here, Andy, please? Yeah, right away. Oh, yeah. Kick it off! Top off your hook! Right <laughs> right <away. laughs> Jamal, calm down. Oh, no. 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 We're not hurting you. You just need to cooperate. Take you back to your cell, Jamal, so you can cool off. <laughs> right, Jamal. I'm going to let you calm down a bit, okay? I'll be back once you've quietened down. I'm a detention officer in police custody. I'm a civilian. I don't have the rank of a police officer. I come in, I do my job and I go home. Some people can't hack this job. The kind of people you get brought in, well, they're the bottom feeders of the human race, really. They're aggressive, abusive, drunk, high, covered in piss, vomit, blood, <laughs> you name it. So I like to get them processed as quickly as possible and locked up. Not much phases me in this job, to be honest. I've seen it all. I used to work as a bouncer. There's quite a lot of overlap in the clientele. <laughs> Drunk and disorderlies, fights, drug deals, knife crimes. At least in this job, I can put them behind a door and lock them in. We're not social workers. We don't have time to be friendly to them, nor should we. They're not here for a holiday. We're not a bloody hotel. Feed them, yeah. Keep them safe, yeah. But that doesn't mean having to take their bullshit and listen to their fucking sob stories. I'm not paid enough for that. My main concern is security and order. The less they argue and the more they do what I tell them, the easier it is. 
I see it like the tills at Aldi. You want to get them through as quickly as possible. Some of the other people who work here, like Andy, are a bit soft and it means they're a lot slower than me. It causes backlogs. They think they're being kinder, explaining the process, reminding them of their rights all the time, but most of our clientele are off their tits on something or not bright enough to understand anyway, so it's a waste of time. And they're offenders at the end of the day. They're not victims, because even if they are innocent of the crime they've been arrested for, you can be sure they're guilty of something else. And yeah, they may not have had a brilliant upbringing or a brilliant life, but to go out and break the law, thieving, taking drugs, terrorising innocent people, that's a choice at the end of the day. You do get a lot of violence and screaming and shouting and... Sometimes it does get a bit much on a heavy shift. And I do get a bit riled, if I'm honest. So I just say to the Sarge, I'm taking five minutes and go out for a fag. I think if I didn't, I'd end up punching one of them. We're trained in restraint. And my thinking is, get them on the floor as soon as you have any hint that they're about to kick off. Because it's our safety on the line. You can tell by looking at most of them whether they're going to be trouble. I mean... <laughs> It's not PC to say it, but there's definitely types that kick off more than others. But it's frowned on if you take precautions based on that instinct. But for me, it's just a simple risk assessment based on my experience. Some of them are just playing the system. We get homeless or prostitutes getting arrested deliberately so that they can have a night's kip. A lot have hygiene problems. Doing strip searches is the worst. Some of them proper stink. I swear we should be given face masks to protect us from germs. And then we have the entitled fuckers who complain about everything. The blankets aren't clean, the food isn't hot enough, the cells are too noisy, the lights are too bright. <laughs> and then there's the types who think they're a bit above it all and ask for a book to read or whatever. I mean, come on, really? They're fed? and watered at set meal times and nothing more. I'm too busy for fucking room service. And yeah, I, I wouldn't want to stay in one of those cells, but it shouldn't be comfortable. In my mind, if anything, it's good, it's a bit bleak. It should act as a deterrent, but it doesn't. You see the same faces back over the years. They never learn. How are you doing, Jamal? Are you okay? Mm. It's not ideal, but the truth is, the more you're able to comply with us, the easier it'll be for you. How long have I been here? What time is it? It's just after seven. It feels longer. Here, you must be hungry. I've got you some porridge. Get that down you. And Jamal, just a reminder. We can get you a phone call if you need it, and if you'd like to, we can arrange for the duty solicitor or one of your choosing to come down. I don't want anything. Well, if you change your mind, you can give me a shout. I've been on my own since I was 16. My auntie kicked me out of her house. I say auntie. In Africa, that's a female that's older than you or your mum's friend. In my case, she was both. Dad died when I was six years old. Everyone says alcohol got the better of him in the end. Apparently, he was a good man. That's what mum says every time I talk to her on the phone. Kenya, that's where she is. That's where I'm from, born there. Auntie Blessing. I always wondered why she was called that. As far as I'm concerned, she was more of a curse than a blessing to me. She always preached to me how mom lost her mind when dad died. How she never quite got it together. How lucky I was that mom had a friend like her who was willing to take me in. Mom tried. After dad, you know, for two years to take care of me and my brothers. But in the end... She couldn't manage. She used all the money that left to send me to the land of milk and honey. To England. To my loving, kind, caring, auntie blessed. 
28th of January 2006. Birmingham Airport. <laughs> I have never been so cold in my life. In fact, I don't think I'll ever be that cold again unless I go to the Antarctic or something. But then again, what the hell would a black man like me be doing in the Antarctic? <laughs> Outside the airport stood this woman with a sign that said Jamal Kebedi, my name. She was short and had one of those faces that's too old for their age. There was also a toughness about her that I didn't really like. My life in Kenya with my mother, who I loved and still love more than anything. God, I miss her. That life was over. This woman, this auntie blessing, was not my new mother. Man, I hated her guts. Oh, I did. To think about it now, it wasn't even her that I hated. It was the damn situation. The fact that I had no father. My mom was millions of miles away. Friends too. And I was to start a new life with some strange woman in this cold country. Of course I was going to hate her. If she didn't exist, maybe, just maybe, mom would have somehow found a way of keeping me with her in Kenya. Auntie Blessing never exactly made my life easy. I always got punished for the smallest things, things Jo and Elizabeth, her kids, never got punished for. One time she said she had no money for transport, so I had to walk two miles to school. 40p, 40 pence. It got so bad that when she kicked me out at 16, I was more than happy to leave. That's when all the trouble began. I had no one, no accountability. Except this necklace my mom gave to me. And what chance have I got anyway? People look at me like I'm a some kind of scumbag, assuming I've done something wrong, that I'm guilty of something. It's true what they say, you know. If you're a black lad like me, you've got no chance. I've been stopped and searched so many times for no fucking reason. Just for the color of my skin. Same for my friends. We are just written off. I last saw my mom when I was 18. Back home in Kenya. I promised I would do my best to give her everything she needs. Deserves. And you know what? I have tried. I have tried so damn hard. Tried to, to make things better. I have. I should not be here. I do not belong here. <laughs>